It's time to upgrade the Two Guys Tech virtual server, and we're gonna do it with this guy right here. We named this thing Big Boy. Stick around to check it out. Hey everybody, it's Richard Two Guys Tech. You know, behind the scenes, we use virtualization for just a ton of things here on the channel. We have virtual machines for sharing data between John and I for editing, a virtual machine for storing videos, virtual machines for firewalls, a Plex server, just a ton of VMs. But unlike famous tech tubers, we don't have a ton of cash to be spending on cutting edge hardware. So we'll be doing this on the cheap. Before we get to the hardware we chose though, let's take a look at our requirements. We have a few requirements that need to be met for this build. First, it needs to have enough CPU, RAM, and disk storage to run up to 10 VMs or more without compromise. Next, we need to be able to take advantage of older components that we already own. This includes compatible RAM, SSDs, mechanical hard drives, and network cards. Third, it needs to have some future proof left in it. We don't want to buy a system that VMware won't support in the next version of ESXi. And last, it needs to be quiet. Our current virtual host is a Dell R710 and it resides in Rich's garage. In the warm summer months, the fans of that server are screaming loud. So let's take a look at what we chose for our base chassis. Searching on eBay, we came across this monster, the Dell Precision T7600. This high-end workstation debuted in 2012 and fully configured maxed out around nine grand. Our lovely new host has two Intel Xeon E5 2680 CPUs. These CPUs are eight core, 16 thread, 2.7 gigahertz Sandy Bridge badassness that turbo boosts to 3.5 gigahertz. Another great aspect of this chassis is the built-in four bay easily removable hard disks that are available from the front of the case. No need to open up the case in case a hard drive dies. This system supports up to a modest 512 gigabytes of RAM in 12 DIMM slots in its dual CPU configuration. The system has a ton of PCIe slots for whatever hardware we need to add to it dual one gigabit embedded NICs, and an easy swappable 1300 watt PSU. And the best part is this absolute beast of a system only cost us $300. And it came with 16 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive. No video card, but that's easily fixed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna do to this machine. The system clearly has enough CPU power to satisfy all of our virtualization needs, but the included 16 gigabytes of RAM isn't sufficient for running as many VMs as we do. So we'll be adding six additional eight gigabyte DDR3 DIMMs that we have on spare. These install just like any stick of RAM would in any other system, but when installing additional RAM into a dual CPU system, be sure to spread the RAM evenly across both CPU banks. The additional six eight gigabyte sticks plus the 16 gigs that came with the system brings us up to a total of 64 gigabytes. Plenty to satisfy our virtualization needs with room to grow. Now on to the data stores for the host. To provide the best variety of storage performance for our VMs, we'll be deploying a three-tiered storage concept. Tier one will be our highest performance data store. This will be where we store VMs that require the fastest access to their disks. For this, we'll be using a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD that we have on spare. Our T7600 is too old to have native M.2 NVMe storage slots in the motherboard, so we bought this simple 4X PCIe to M.2 adapter to connect the SSD. Since NVMe is essentially a PCI Express bus device, we can just install the M.2 SSD onto the adapter and plug it into a PCIe slot directly, like so. As a side note, this system is just too old to support booting off an NVMe drive. But that doesn't matter for us because once we install ESXi, we'll be able to access the drive just like any other drive in the system. Next is our Tier 2 data store. This tier will be used for VMs that need to be fast, but don't benefit from the lightning fast speed of an NVMe. We'll be using a variety of 500 gigabyte Samsung SSDs that we've collected from over the years. These drives will be configured in a RAID 5 array to protect against individual disk failure since they're all of varying age and model. By default, our T7600 has four hot swappable SATA bays up front and one empty 2.5 inch external drive bay that we'll be installing a high density 8 disk 2.5 inch SSD removable drive bay. Rich found this on eBay during last year's Black Friday sale and got it for a steal. The bay installs right into the empty drive bay and is made available through the front bezel of the case. As another side note, as the system came, it only supported four SATA drives. Now, the motherboard itself has two SAS connectors, so technically the system supports eight drives, so we went to Amazon and bought a SAS to four port SATA cable so we could access all eight of our drives. If you're planning on doing the same thing, you'll need to buy that cable or get yourself a RAID card. Last is our tier three storage. This storage will hold large VMs on slow mechanical disks. VMs that require a lot of hard disk space but don't require the speed of SSD would be placed here. We'll be using the hot swap drive bays built in the front of the case to connect these. 
The great thing about the Dell cases is their toolless design. No screws, just pins to put them together and slide them in the slot. Easily done. You might be wondering why I didn't create a mirror pair or a RAID one with the two mechanical drives that are going into the system. And the short answer is, is because, well, one's a four terabyte drive, one's a five terabyte drive. If I create a pair, I'll lose that extra terabyte of space and that's just not worth it. I'm just gonna create individual data stores on each drive and leave it at that. I've got a backup system that backs up my virtual machines that back up to a Synology NAS. And so I'm not worried about losing any data if I lose one of those mechanical drives. Now it's time to power on the system, make sure everything is healthy and functional before we install our hypervisor, which is gonna be ESXi. Also, speaking of ESXi, we're gonna be installing that on a memory stick that plugs into the motherboard. You can download the ESXi hypervisor for free from VMware. Just create an account and download ESXi. Then using the downloaded ISO, install ESXi onto your internal USB stick. Once the installation is completed, reboot the system and you're ready to get working with your VMs. So here are my final thoughts on all this, and that is I'm just still so mind blown that you can get two Xeons, 16 cores, 32 threads, 16 gigs of RAM, an extra hard drive, all for just 300 bucks. And yes, you can go buy a top of line Ryzen CPU right now and get that much performance for $500, but that's just a chip, that's nothing else. There's so much more you'd have to do, and that's not really meant to be used as a virtual host. This is all ready for you to start experimenting with virtualization at home, and really for such a good value, be able to really unlock a ton of power. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do it for our video today. I genuinely hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it, and I would love to know what you think, so get down in those comments below, let me know. Also, if this is the first time you've seen us, please consider subscribing because it really helps us out and keeps us making these videos. If you'd like to know when we release the next one, click that bell below as well. If you're a Twitter user, you can follow me at Two Guys Tech Rich and the channel at Two Guys Tech. See you soon. Thanks for watching.